Welcome into Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, the only podcast on the Marshland Media Empire detailing episode by episode Lucha Underground, the El Rey Network AAA Collective. Featuring a big ol' wrestling nerd and a, a casual big ol' wrestling nerd. I'm Sean. Hi. Yo, what up? It's Halloween, so I'm talking in old school Marshland Monster rap vocals. Let yeah. Let him know. Is this going to be the whole episode? Yeah, I, you better believe my throat can... Mm, it's a goat, baby. I, I can, can I can take bleeding. things in and put things out. Yeah. Uh, you are actively bleeding onto the microphone. I am concerned with your health and your well-being. My good friend James, hello. Yeah, but that blood's not from my throat. It's from a bird I decapitated with my hands that I squeezed <laughs> its blood out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine then. If you are a bird and you are listening, thank you. We're sorry we decapitate so many of you, but it's Halloween. Happy yeah, Halloween, yeah. James. Happy Halloween. I'm back, guys. It's oh, James. Wow. Not I, 14-year-old marshland mo- <laughs> monster. That I'm was having this- so aggressive. <laughs> no, and I can't I, say anything because I burp on this all the time, but that was like an aggressive, <laughs> that burp. You did something to that gas to want to escape your body so aggressively. <laughs> I don't normally drink soda, but I've been exhausted working like 12 hours. Just truly, I wake up. Mm -hmm. If it's before 730, I'm working on an edit or music, whatever. And then at 730, I start working out. That takes about an hour. And then I do a quick little stuff. I prepare Nicole's food for breakfast, then we eat, and then I'm back to working until like five or six. So it's generally mm -hmm. just 12 hour days nonstop. Oh, buddy, that's stupid. It's good. And we all ha and we have to do it. I'm, so I'm sorry you're tired because you don't deserve to be because you already work crazy hard. Yeah, it would be great if I was reciprocating monetary value or just people mm -hmm. actually listening to this shit. But Speaking unfortunately, which, welcome to Sweaty Time Pro yeah. Wrestling. I'm pretty sure the least listened to podcast on the network. Uh -huh. you know, James keeps bringing me back. I'm 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 thrilled and I'm happy as always to be here. As I've said before, this movie's gay has not posted an episode in two years. Still gets more listens. <laughs> <laughs> but you know i met a guy at a bar and i told him about this uh, what i do and he sounded interested i actually did I, I i name dropped it uh at the store i work at and the guy the regular seemed very nice so maybe that's our second listener Ooh. is the regular from my store who's like yeah that sounds like something I'll tell you I'll listen to and then leave. Mm -hmm. like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Or our second listener is, this is also a carryover from the Vampiro episode. We're recording them at the same time. Bam, uh, bam, uh, bam, the bam, the bam. intro to the Vampiro free feed drop. If you haven't listened to that, go back and listen. So mm -hmm. I believe our second listener could also include... Someone who worked on Lucha Underground that is a friend of ours, Steve F., a.k.a. Hit People Guy. It's always hard. Do I call him Steve F.? Do I call him Hit People Guy? Do I call him HPG? I don't mm -hmm. know. But a very graciously <laughs> is friends with someone who worked on the show and reached out. And they will be on the show eventually, hopefully November, if not December. They're busy, fuckers. So we're going to need all of all two of you that are not this guy. We need you to be really cool, mm -hmm. super well behaved. And if I swear, I swear to God, if you step in poop, just wash off your shoe before you come into the podcast. Just just to get a little you get, you get a little stick and you scrape it off. You get a little hose and you spray it off. I don't care how you get that poop off of your shoe. We can't let we can't let people see that there's poop on our shoes. I love poop on my shoe. I get it. And if you douchebags try to put Jesus. it in Chavo's duffel bag, that's season one, not season two. We, we respect Chavo. the king Guerrero. Actually, I don't know if I I don't know if I love Chavo after this episode, but let's get into it. What are you talking about? He's fine in this one. He's we'll get into it. Did I watch the right episode? Season two, episode three, the hunt is on. Yeah, he wasn't in this, was he? 
He's mentioned in it yeah, by a man we love. Uh, uh, and uh, because we? we love this. I thought we did. We loved him last season. Well, now he's a cop, so do we? No, not that guy. Someone oh, else. wait. Who? Ooh, we have so much to get into. Oh, so much. Let's start it off. We actually get, we go straight to the desk. No uh, pre-show shenanigans. We got to get right to it. As Vampiro tells us, this is not a test. Do not adjust your screens. Vampiro is there wearing a hooligan branded t-shirt. Hooligan, I assume to be the European equivalent of Affliction. If you remember Affliction t-shirts, uh, then drink some water and go for a stretch. We're old. And Vampiro clearly hasn't taken a breath in, I don't know, he's three so minutes. Red. He is so red. beat red. Maybe he's pissed because he just realized no house band in this season. No, the house band space has been replaced which is a good replacement we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. The Mil Mortez throne of disapproval, where he watches your matches and he does not like you. Also, it's great. As an audio engineer and knowing how a soundboard and a mix works, just to have to go prep that every single yeah. weekend, mic up everything, that is an insane amount of work to do for. I don't know, maybe during warm up, you know, in between Mm -hmm. filmings, that band's chugging, playing along. Maybe they're doing the chicken dance or something. Uh, Yeah. And they're giving, I think, something this country, I don't know, maybe because I lived in the Northeast for like most of my life, I don't see a lot of like bands out of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's cool that it was, it's, it's, it was a cool uh, platform that they gave them. But like, yeah, 30 seconds of TV time about, I think, uh, per episode. And they're like, you know, they're batch recordings, but it's still it's a lot of work for 30 seconds of TV time. But we miss them. And shouts out to all the sick ass bands in uh, Lucha Underground season one, now replaced by a chair and I'll say it, a disapproving father figure. Mm hmm. I don't know if he's de- he's a father figure. I will say for me, this is a personal for me, Bill Buertes represents himself as a disappointing father figure. That's the beauty of art. You can get, you can, you can see a disappointing father figure wherever you look if you try hard enough. I always thought the beauty of art was the trash bag of miscellaneous stabbing and piercing items he carried with him. <laughs> Wait, what? That's from the Terrifier, <laughs> Art the Clown. Oh, I, I've never heard of any of those words. You've never cool. heard of Terrifier? No. Oh, my goodness. It was a box office smash last year. It was made for like 25 or not 2,500, made for a quarter of a million and ended up making like $24 million. Oh, snap. Nice. That's a regular Five Nights at Freddy's. It's also a hyper violent, gory movie, and that's why people are wise to it i think the second Mm. one sucked it blew it was way too long but the first one's pretty good hell yeah i mean it's are you watching any before we get deep deep are you watching any scary movies for this halloween yeah absolutely dude who are you talking to i don't even know are you are you are you checking your phone for your list of scary movies seen of course the most recent we watched on uh, thursday or friday we watched bad channels which is a full moon feature alien movie that's just wild and weird and then we watched oh what was it what was it killer workout that was pretty good well that sounds fun i'm assuming that is a gym that comes to life with the power of demonic possession no what you're thinking of is death spa that's what happens in death spa I however fucking, oh i've seen death spa it's and so I fucking, good i love shout out to eric ba- uh, eric Bazile, uh buffalo comic and the dude that showed me death spa and changed my life it's so good killer Hell workout yeah. is just a normal slasher movie that happens in a workout area gym. Hell yeah. Hey, do you want to hear my mom's review of the new Five Nights at Freddy's movie? What is it? <clears throat> and again, this is a review from my mother, who is a sweet, sweet woman. It looked good, but that you had to pay attention. So I'm watching a Miss Christmas now, since I can look up every now and then. It's actually a good one. I'll try Freddy again later. Wowzers. I thought you were going to say, yeah, game was better. <laughs> <laughs> I, my mom saw it on Peacock and then I, I, you ever catch yourself explaining something that really has no business being explained because it takes 10 years? Mm-hmm. 
that was me in the middle of like, well, it was actually a game franchise first. And yeah. <laughs> and she's just like, this is too much information that I do not. I a don't do not need B will never retain. But I love you because you're my son. So shouts out to my mom. I love you, mom. Mummy. OK, so Mummy. real quick, the yes. being who is it's a director or the director who also directed Blood Diner. Blood Diner is way better. Sean, if you love mm-hmm. Death Spy, you will love Blood Diner. But the being down. It's a great creature feature. Then it's sort of mm-hmm. slightly sci-fi, a little bit, or very sci-fi, a little bit horror. Earth Girls are easy. We loved that. Poltergeist. Classics. Nicole watched it for the first time. I watched it for what I thought was the multiple time, but realizing maybe I've only seen Poltergeist 2 a multiple times. Then mm-hmm. The Dentist. That one ruled. Mars Hell Attacks. Yeah. Two thumbs down. That sucks. Ooh, I need to rewatch. I hated it when I was a kid, but I was a very... It's bad. It's, but isn't this kind of supposed to be like campy? It's just boring. Oh, that's a shame. That's like the one thing it's not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Then we're on a Toby Hooper kick. So we watched Life Force, which was outer space vampires. Real good. Yeah. yo. Then Videodrome we recently watched. And oh, boy. Love Videodrome. Why? No, thumbs down. Yeah. Nicole and I both thought it was just kind of like... It feels like a 30-minute yeah. story stretched or a 30-minute plot stretched okay. out to 90 minutes where there's still some stuff happening and it's not mm-hmm. necessarily boring, but the story just isn't there. I guess I can see that it does because it does feel like it's a crazy premise with like enough and a lot of mystery. So I think because they lean into some of the mystery, a lot of it needs to get unpacked. So it doesn't it doesn't move like but it's also an older, like it's an, you know, what, 80 something. Yeah. So like it's, you know, pacing was just kind of different back then. I saw it in theaters and I, I liked it. I'll say that I thought it moved perfectly, but that's because I, I thought it, I thought it moved wonderfully. Yeah, but we just, I think Videodrome and the Poltergeist probably came out in the same exact years. Yeah, but Poltergeist... But I think that's part of that comes into the conspiracy that Videodrome Videodrome's around like built around this conspiracy where Poltergeist there's not like a mystery to uncover there there's like a problem to be solved. Life Force was still fun and that has a mystery needing to be solved. I don't know. I really I really like Videodrome, but we you also I also love Stephen Lynch. Well, not Stephen Lynch. That's a comedian. Yeah, David Lynch. <laughs> I love, I just love the Stephen Lynch album, Craig Christ, okay? And I'm tired of pretending I don't. I also watched a borderline horror movie, but it's not a horror movie, called Just One of the Guys, where a girl Mm. who wants to be a journalist isn't being taken seriously. And by girl, I mean a high school student. So Mm -hmm. she pretends to be a guy at a different school and then falls in love with a dude and then of course it ends with him being like well wait i'm not like that and she just like flashes her tits and he's like oh "Oh, okay i've seen i have not seen this movie but i have seen it covered on i love the 80s okay for the i saw for the first time jennifer's body oh hell yeah dude i'm like mad that i let that slip under my radar for so long nipple slip under your radar I let, I'm so mad I let that nipple slip under my radar. It is so much more than I thought it was going to be. It, it is so much more than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like campy, kind of fun, not like, but like at the end of the kind of, kind of saccharine, kind of like there's not a lot. There is a lot. That, mm-hmm. there, there are, oh, there are so many juicy layers to that movie that I did not appreciate when it was like, when it was first came out. Corey and I talk about that on our Teeth episode, specifically because Teeth and Mm -hmm. Jennifer's body, we both feel are a deconstruction of the rape revenge movies in genre, where normally I hate those movies. Um, I just think there's Mm -hmm. no, like, a woman can just, like, get revenge on someone. You don't need to show the most brutal thing happening to her. Or just tell yeah. us it happened to her. We'll still be confident that, like, yeah, she should be killing men. Yeah, I do want to see Valley. Is it Valley of the Dolls? No. I, I don't know if it's, like, the first rape revenge movie, but it's the one that really, like, made that a genre. So, like, I want to see, like, I want to see that because it was the first but yeah, Jennifer's body and teeth just do it so fucking differently and good. And Adam Brody, I love you. I think Seth from the OC, I think I think you're a great character, 
but man, are you a piece of shit in Jennifer's body. And it's so good to see. It's so good. Go see Jennifer's body as well as Life Force. And maybe Videodrome is dependent on who you who you like more. Me. I've, I'm pointing at me. James is pointing at himself. Will we ever get along or will we have to take it to the ring <gasps> like this first match? Bengala, you like how I smoothly transitioned back into the podcast? I loved it. Oh, thank you. Bengala versus the debuting Cobra Moon. Oh, hell yeah. A.K.A. Thunder Rosa Bay fucking B. Oh, my gosh. Bengala, of course, is a cat uh, and was a contender yeah. for the first God, uh, Gift of the Gods title match. <laughs> He's taking on the debuting luchador with ties to, quote, the bad boy of the seven original Aztec tribes. Mm -hmm. That is Cobra Moon who slithers her way to the ring, <laughs> sexy <laughs> and scary, flick of her tongue, whip of her ponytail. Like, before the bell even rings, her character feels so solid. Oh, yes. What she needs, instead of a ponytail, mm -hmm. she needs to put, like, a little rattle in the, in the tip of it. Ooh, so then I it like feels that. like, and then you, it's also I an like illegal that. weapon. Yeah, a weighted rattle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's only been, she debuts... I don't know when she started training, but she debuts in 2014, like on the local indie scene. So like she is very fresh, not just to televised wrestling, but just professional wrestling. And now, guys, so everyone remembers if you've listened to all the episodes in maybe 10 episodes from now, Sean could come on and be like, hey, I'm so sorry. Cobra Moon has actually been wrestling since she was 14 and at the That's age, at, you know, during. I'm real uh, bad at this. <laughs> the, her first match was uh, was tainted because the towers came down. She wrestled in, in the morning. Day. That's <laughs> She had a matinee match. <laughs> the day the towers fell on the matinee mat. I, I'm still mad. I called Chris Christopher Daniels Chris Danielson. Yes, I might redact that, but according to Wikipedia, so you know what it is is what it is. Yeah, 2014. So Wikipedia, if you're lying to me, stop it. I no. can't keep getting shit wrong on this podcast. It's being recorded. Yeah, like last week. Oh, Vampiro's up to nothing. Then, oh, he's wrestling Insane Clown Posse. Wait, no, he's no, he's not. Well, he's wrestling Violent J soon. Is he? I sent you a link to this man to the Fago Lovers site that it's Vampiro and some other guys versus Violent J and some other guys in NWA. Oh my gosh! Okay, I gotta, you I gotta go look through my it. links. You gave, you gave it, you, <laughs> you liked acknowledged it. it. <laughs> you went in the comments <laughs> of fagolovers.net and just said, "Oh man, fuck Twisted." Even though Twisted isn't even involved, as they do on that goddamn website. Yeah, but for real, fuck Twisted. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, just that. I don't. I have no way to bring this back other than to say I really enjoyed. I I just I, like before the bell rings. It's weird. Bing, I feel bing, like bing. the character stuff is the stuff that like that's not the stuff they necessarily teach you at wrestling school, right? You should, like like and to see someone pick that up so cleanly before the like before before the sweet sweet ding ding ding. She's on the ropes. She's got this smirk where it's like. It's arrogant and it's evil and it's fuck. It's everything I want a snake based luchador to be. Maybe I'm just a Thunder Rosa fan as well. I am. But also I was, I was real happy to see her and see her do so well. Very excited. Very excited for Cobra Moon in Lucha Underground. Well, she did. She she was taught under Gary Austin at the Groundling. So maybe that's why she she knows mm -hmm. so much about character work. I mean, she, she's a Gary Austin. I didn't realize she was a Gary Austin student. Uh huh. Uh, hell yeah. Good for you. Good. Good for you. Good for you. She's always hanging out with Cheech and Chong in the back room. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, she uh, carried Lorraine Newman's bags while she was still interning at the theater uh -huh. and living in and living in Mexico. I think this. I think it's a. Yeah, this is a vampiro quote. It might be beautiful and sexy, but you gotta remember, deep down, this is old school evil. Oh yeah. Which is how? Which is what the groundlings put on all of their brochures. Yeah. 
What were we doing? <laughs> we were talking about how when you come to Lucha Underground, they'll take mm-hmm. anyone. But you got to make sure you have a unique style. You got to bring that just like MLM Pod co-hosts. Everyone mm-hmm. has their own unique style of talking. Yeah. You know, R2's like, ee And then Nicole's like, eh. But <laughs> Sean, <laughs> you're over <laughs> here like... You know? You f- f- a, fuck you. I thought you were going to use words to, like, I don't know, do anything. No, you're just literally how we form sounds out of our mouth holes. Yeah, I think I would okay. know. And now you're shooting at me because I inhale when I laugh sometimes. No, I'm just saying that's how you free flow, baby. Cool. Great. I'm- you're a goose. You say it. That's not on me. <laughs> now you're laughing like lurch. <laughs> I got many laughs, just like Cobra Moon has many moves. Drop <laughs> kicks, Teharis off the Tope Teharis when she jumps from the ring to the outside and is like, "I'm gonna wrap my legs around your neck," and we go flip. Whoops! That was that was cool. Not a long match, just under two minutes forty seven seconds. But we see a lot. We see Bengala, who is a veteran, who is very ring savvy, find his moment to fire up, land in some sweet sweet kicks. Get some offense back in. Uh, eventually, he goes for a top rope moonsault, but only gets Cobra's knees. She slithers around, throws <laughs> on the snake sleeper, which is like a dragon sleeper with the arm caught, and puts Bengala to sleep. Again, two minutes, 47 seconds. I really loved Bengala's flying headbutts. Those were fucking cool. That was very sweet. Flying headbutt, flying help, headbutt, spinning wheel kick. Like, very visceral. And very cool. I like like that to do so much in two minutes forty seven seconds. They make they make Cobra Moon look great, mm-hmm. uh, like a real killer. They make Bengala look like that really wily, intelligent veteran. That this, this wasn't an easy match. Like it wasn't an easy match for her to win, but for her to win, I don't know. Like again, when you say it's too, a lot happens in two minutes forty seven seconds, and that's very impressive. There were two folks in our apartment who are very upset by this outcome who oh no nicole's a big bengala guy i knew it no it was socks and <laughs> butter shout out to all of our cat listeners uh meow bitch this this podcast this episode sucks i can no, only it apologize <laughs> it's good we talked horror movies and then uh we, we found did. out the unique styles you know you made fun of my laugh and how dare you? Little Corey's all like, uh, uh, uh. okay, I feel better now that we're putting down little Corey. And then Jose's, Ooh. Jose's coming in just like, <laughs> God, Jose is so fucking cool. And Monse is also like, <laughs> but after hearing someone say Chi Chi, because it means boobs. Nice. Speaking, this is the worst transition. Speaking of boobs, let's go to Katrina's office. Katrina's office, she's playing with her rosary. She still gets a tingle when she feels the presence of Phoenix, uh. who is there and he wants Cuerno, the new gift of the gods champion. Just a little quick recap. Cuerno defeated Phoenix last week for that gift of the gods title belt. Boo. Big boo. And Katrina warns him while we're all, while we're all booing Phoenix that eventually his a thousand lives will run out. Oh, I, real quick, I was booing mm-hmm. just the concept of the gift of the gods. Oh, you don't like the gift of the gods? Oh, yeah, because I'm all Satan, baby. Oh, okay. Satan could be a god. No. Oh, okay. He rejects the notion. Oh, okay, that's cool. Hey, man, if you could high-five Satan or um, not, would you high-five Satan? Yeah, I'd high-five. I need an in, baby. I know Hell where yeah. I'm heading, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's all networking. Even in the afterlife, it is still all networking, mm-hmm. baby. Uh, yep. Uh, Phoenix, as a point out, he may, uh, even after his thousand, before his thousand lives are up, he wants Cuerno, he wants Mill, and he wants you, Katrina. Fucking Phoenix is my, it, mm, mm, just, mm. He is edging her. He's edging me. Uh, We're all edged by this sweet, sweet phoenix. Oh, my God. The rated R superstar himself from Back you, in- too. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm st- how 
how did we get how do we get to the rated the rated r superstar from edge. b2 himself edge from phoenix because he's edging oh right i forgot we yes true okay i listen to the, i don't listen to this podcast while we're doing it apparently i am not one of the two <laughs> See, um, this is what I'm saying. He's all you're like, right. you right. Honk, honk, um. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Actually, it's honk, um, honk. Yeah, yeah. There we go. People are like, he doesn't say um that much. That's because I, I do my job. Hell yeah. Well, let's do th- Well, how can you do this job without your precious technology? Say, I don't know, a millennia ago? No, no, this no. This is wild. It's wild and Aerostar, we find out, is over a millennia old, as well kind as of? has created LED light technology. Mm. <laughs> Not, <laughs> this is insane. It's so insane. This is this is one this is one of the, those things that if it pays off, that's awesome. If it doesn't, oh no, boy. It's, no, it's still fucking rad. I love okay. this. This again. Okay, when, when you're playing Tekken, you find out, oh my God, this person's been alive for 300 years. That's what we need here, Seanathan. We do, but unlike Tekken, we can't, we do need stories to pay off a little more cleanly, I feel like. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Let's get into it, actually, though. So we see the graphics show up a millennia ago. This is the first time hop in Lucha Underground. And we see a young woman of an Aztec tribe drawing in the dirt near a bonfire. She says the man from the stars has returned. Well, tribal leaders discuss the seven tribes are at war. She's drawn a Stussy S. What is that? The cool S that you see on every middle schooler's notebook. Hell yeah. And, <laughs> and she's playing MASH. A mysterious Uh voice calls for the unification of the tribes to stop what is coming. That mysterious voice is fucking Aerostar, which is, again, what? And then he, like, blasts off with sparklers and turns into a ball of light and flees. With a little bit of, like, he has the Iron Man chest uh, battery Mm -hmm. in him. And that's how he, like, sparks a thousand years into the future. I read this. So, yeah, he's like, what do you mean something's coming? And he's like, don't worry, I got, or, or no, the guys, the tribe leaders say, well, that's, that, w- that won't come for another thousand years. What they're afraid of is the gods arriving in the form of man. Mm. Someone with the power of the gods, but is a man, which I think, like, I think Dario talked about i think that that's what dario said the medallions were okay right yeah i think that's part i think that's the gift of the gods title is the power of the gods in the form of a man but that's not coming for another thousand years so arrow star says oh by the way i also time travel maybe and I, maybe that's what i took it as he jumped a thousand years into the future i took this as oh i'm going to miss mar or captain marvel this i'm gonna go Mm -hmm. off elsewhere and in a thousand years i'll be back it's so it's just so like it's really cool if it works out if it doesn't because i I could also see this as why are we just giving aerostar more powers (laughs) like but then again, he doesn't. We really never defined his powers before. It does set up an issue of playing games like Dragon Ball. What's the Dragon Ball? What's the fighting one that's really popular? Um, Budokai. It doesn't matter. Where you have like Hercule, Doctor Satan himself, or what, Mister Satan himself, going up against Majin Buu and being able to beat Majin Buu. That doesn't make any sense. Aerostar in this case is Majin Buu, and just everyone else is Hercule. I think they did a good enough job. I would be afraid of that if they didn't do such a good job setting up. They really, the only Hercule is Marty the Moth, I feel like, where he's just the only regular. Yeah. Is he, I was going to say he's a regular guy, but he might not be. He might be a Dexter. Uh, yeah. He might be a serial killer. Oh my God, if that's so, where this goes. If he comes <laughs> to an event wearing, like, it would be fake, of course, but wearing what appears to be sexy star's face oh my god this would become my favorite show in in forever (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm so upset that the listeners can't see you fanning yourself down <sighs> as you consider Marty the Moth wearing Sexy Star's face. Yeah, because <laughs> as everyone knows, if you're on the Patreon at the $25 mark, you can live stream these episodes, but the mm-hmm. camera's just pointed at my crotch. That's true. That's so you true. can't so see you- me fan. Yeah, and trust me, uh, you're going to be happy it is. Oh, yeah. We guarantee it. Uh, so, yeah, this segment, this is either... I'm just leaking pre-cum <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> that, which is how we watch this segment. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll say, I want to say this for it, uh, that this is definitely one of those... I could see this being very polarizing, where this is either shit you love, or this is what's like, mm, oh, this isn't wrestling. I'll say for us, we uh, James absolutely loves this shit. Oh, yeah. I've been burned by story by bad creative before, so maybe that's why I'm reticent about it, but I'm excited for it. Been burned you know? by sparklers that jet set you <laughs> into the future? Yep, that come off of my LED-inspired chest plate? Absolutely. What if he is a time traveler and he can speed up time and that, like, in a future match, the lights flicker and he's, like, going zing, holding his he's arms like, out like at, at... ping-ponging around the place? Uh, no, no, no. He's, he's focusing in on, let's say, oh. a... Who's, who's Brian someone? Brian Cage. Brian Cage. And then, like, Brian Cage is going... And then Hell lights yeah. flashing. And then all of a sudden, like, a poof of fog. And then once the lights turn back on, it's just an old man in the ring going up oh. against Aerostar. That would be the best. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. You know what? I was I, w- I was coming on it before like, oh, they're just giving him new powers. Why the fuck not? New yeah. powers are cool. These are these are cool as new powers. Or it's it's like a this Kevin is- Nash or a Scott Hall. Are those the two guys? I know one of them recently yeah. passed away. But back then mm-hmm. it would R. have R. been Scott cool Hall, the bad guy. If that's the old guy you get an older wrestler just they're out of nowhere but it is brian cage in the same singlet that would have been also funny and wait hold on did brian cage when he go grows to be 60 years old also get like six inches on him hell yeah (laughs) we can only we can we can we can only fantasy book well we cut back to modern day in the temple gym with king cuerno curling weights in front of his brand new gift of the gods title katrina confronts him she says you took the title but did not destroy the man and it's like come on cuerno did his job your wounded animal is safe from phoenix referring to mil muertes of course Katrina responds, wounded or not, even the best hunter would fall prey to Mil Muertes. Cuerdo gets in her face, but it's cool. We're all on the same side. She tells Cuerdo his new mission tonight is to make sure that that bird never flies again. Last luchador standing match against Phoenix. Beautiful. Succinct. Gets to the point. And while simultaneously getting character motivations across. Sean, you missed a huge thing that even Nicole, who was watching because I'm so busy, I had to watch last night because I just wouldn't have had time today. All right. Well, instead of judging me for missing it, why don't you just tell me what it was? (laughs) Well, Nicole audibly (laughs) went, oh, my God, because he goes, well, in Katrina's face, Cuerno goes, the hunt. Mm -hmm. Is on well, oh, he gets like a big he's, whiff. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, I would do, brother. A big whiff, hell yeah, dude. He's the hunter, and also I want to smell Katrina. Or because we he's, all do. Or because he's in the gym at season two now. He sniffs and he says, "Thank you so much for getting that shit smell out of here." Because <laughs> just Chavo's Chavo duffel hasn't bags been booked for weeks. Yeah, yeah. Or because everyone's now afraid because Mill's like, I don't, I wasn't involved in this duty shit, okay? You don't think Mill was involved with the duty shit? No, because he's a demon, I feel like he doesn't poop. Agree. You know what? Cool. I ha- I cannot find any fault in that logic. He just uh, throws it all up. Anything that he, like, he sucks the essence and protein out of mm-hmm. in the vitamins, the minerals, out of food in his stomach, and then he just throws it up as like one long, uh, I guess, rope. This is going to be a really sharp transition after that. But on the sexiness of Lucha Underground, um, it really, be, I don't know, it, it, again, it's coming, some of this is coming from that early 2000s when I started watching wrestling, where it's not, 
it's hot, but it wasn't always sexy. Hot where it's kind of just, it's kind of it's like blunt, like, hey man, like it's Jerry the King Lawler shouting titties mm-hmm. over over a microphone. And everybody like, whoa, titties. Like this is like like giving Cuerno that like long sniff, that long inhale, and Katrina with just like kind of standing there being like, You're a fucking freak, but we're on the same side. So go ahead, take that whiff there, buddy boy. Like it's so fucking sexy. Yeah. And again, not the not the bl- in not a necessarily blunt kind of way. That to me is sexy. It's when it's not sexy. Sexy is not like a pa- big old pair of titties just going bow bow. It's a big old pair of titties that make you think about your existence. You know what I mean? Titties that give you an existentialist crisis. That's sexy. We could also dissect this because why is. Cuerno doing this to Katrina sexy, but Marty doing it to anyone creepy. Exactly. <laughs> we don't know. Um, we don't know. Um, I, I, it's because he's, I think it's because it's because Marty's desperate. Yes, honestly. and is clearly yeah. loving it too much. Whereas Cuerno, he's smelling the hunt that's about to take place, but he's mm-hmm. also smelling that cunt. <sighs> Who it, what? He is smelling Ew. that cunt that's Ew. <laughs> that is grace. Amen. Jack Evans versus Drago. Amen. Truly amen. I'm only moving along because we got we got more matches to do. Or in the place. That would have been better. Uh, uh, fair. Jack Evans versus Drago is next. The wily Jack Evans uh getting swarmed by the aggressive Drago early. Uh, this is just sort of this is just sort of a prove your place on the card match. Also, real quick, I'm not calling Katrina the c word. I'm just saying like he would be smelling vagina because he has an escalated sense of smell. Oh yeah, if you're here for the first time, occasionally James will go for the rhyme and then kind of figure yeah. it out after. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, what what did it, the we hunt? Just, it, wait, no, what I, did I say? The hunt. I don't know, but we do have to kind of keep moving. I know, but I wanted, like, I could have said runt. He ain't the runt in this place. He sure is not. He's big muscle. We'll find out at the end of this. Yeah, we sure will. Uh, Jack Evans and Drago, uh, neither are runts. Both are cunts. Um, Jack Evans <laughs> tries to create distance early. Uh, it's Jack Evans, who's he's been around the block and commentary, and yeah, the, the uh, Vampire Striker put over. He's been around. He's seen some stuff, you know. Um, he's trying to pick his spots, but it's that, but it's Drago swarming him. Uh, he's taking fighting like a man possessed tonight, which is one of the nice. When you watch Drago, you kind of forget that Inframundo style. It's it's fire immediately. And each, every time Evans tries to come back, he's met with that fire. He's just, you, you can't see James going, ah, and waving his hands all willy-nilly. But what else you got to do when a dragon's taking the fight to you? Because there's fire. Also, yeah. Evans, yes. that's the dude, right, Jack Evans? Yes, yes. Vampiro says, he's a human video game, to which Stryker responds, which genre, vamp? And Vampiro says, I don't know, farming sim? Yep. <laughs> Only one of those sentences was true, and it's calling Jack Evans a human video game. Yes, he is a human farming sim. You must pay him Bitcoin to unlock further levels. Jack is fucking great here. Uh, he really does move crazy style, and he doesn't really get to until he had, he has to bite Drago's thumb to escape the submission. The dirty trick. And it's the cool thing about Jack Evans. Like that dirty trick gives him the opening and then his fucking wild ass kicks. Like fucking just dude just doing the the Chun-Li bird kick, but Mm -hmm. in real life. Uh, And that's yeah. The crowd is booing Jack for biting. It's just someone's thumb and the hypocrisy of these fuckers in the crowd. Well, booing this action simultaneously wearing Pentagon Junior shirts. Yo, sad oh miedo. Well, because when Penta does it, he's not a little bitch. No, Jack shut Evans up. is a shut little up. bitch. <laughs> you shut up. I, 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 he's not even in this episode, so we can't really get into it. But the next time Penta's on, we'll get into it. No fear of germs, because you don't know where mm-hmm. that dragon paw has been. Probably all over his gold. The back handspring into eye gouges, the way he like, he throws them into the, innovative, innovative as hell. He 
throws Drago into the corner. He does this crazy back handspring like he's auditioning for the all-Broadway musical review of Bring It On, the cheerleader movie. I thought you were going to say Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders, the musical. Oh, Debbie Does Dallas, the musical? Oh, dang, I need to see I love that. Musical. that. I need to see that musical. Yeah, it's like he does this crazy big back handspring and then he just shoves his fingers in his eyes. It's fucking great. It's crazy how the Tony shunned Deep Throat the musical and that beautiful Mm. rendition where she's singing. (laughs) Agreed. Hell yeah, brothers. (laughs) Drago's (laughs) Drago's fire is too intense. Even after getting his, his eyes gouged and his thumb bit. He still finds himself on top again, crossbody from the top rope to the outside, draping DDT for a two. Drago looks for the dragon layer, the pin, uh, the rolling pin attempt. It gets countered by Jack, who backslides Drago and gets his foot on the ropes to steal the pinfall victory. Seven minutes and twenty seconds. A lot of they gave this, they gave them, they gave them space to cook, and I loved it. At first, I didn't like this win because the that. Move before Jack Evans win that Drago does. What was it again? There was this like deafening DDT or something that I believe was in this match that looked like a blockbuster. I think it was like it was like a running like neck breaker. Yeah, it was something like that. And I'm like, oh, well, Jack Evans is dead now. So (laughs) Jack Evans died. Yeah, Yeah, that I felt weird that he then just popped up so quickly. I wasn't buying Mm -hmm. that. But once he he solidified his win for what he does next. He takes the microphone, gets on top of the announce table, calls his own victory and his new nickname, Jack the Dragon Slayer Evans. And before he steps, he grabs the mic and says, let a pro, because Vampiro and Stryker should be announcing the winner over commentary. Melissa Santos as well should be announcing the winner. Yeah, he grabs the mic and says, let a pro handle this. And as he's standing, uh, like climbing the announce table, he says, out of the way, chumps. Nicole lost it at that. (laughs) He is Jack Evans- I'm not super familiar with his career, and it's a shame because I, you know, he's been around for a while. But in Lucha Under, he is such a high school bully. He actually more now that Marty is like a serial killer. Jack Evans is kind of our normal, just very talented athlete, mm-hmm. like and and doesn't realize he's fighting straight up time wizards or time doctors in the form of Aerostar. Do you think Aerostar is the next Doctor Who? And how do you think Jack Evans will handle fighting a Doctor Who? I'd love that, but I'm super excited because clearly they're setting up a rivalry between between Evans Mm -hmm. and Drago. And those two, they're two of my favorites in Lucha Underground. Meaning, uh, like, I think everyone's probably eventually going to be my favorites here. But damn, he's, (laughs) he's so good. I love it. Yeah, there's one guy who will not be our favorite, uh, and I did not know he debuts in this episode. We'll get to it, though. Oh, and of course, as always, you're, you, have, you have at least one not favorite, and I think he's already out of the company, because we have not seen him this season. Oh, dang. Ha- uh, I don't know. Maybe Rio? I haven't seen him. Yeah, I haven't seen He didn't come in this season yet, right? Uh, not yet. I'll check to see mm-hmm. if he, that was he's done now. While you do, I'll talk, over, I'll talk about the next segment, uh, Tejano's Memories. We get a nice little voiceover clip of Tejano. This is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, the guy we do love, and I know James loves, just your average blue collar ass kicking fucking dude who does still hate Chavo. Yeah! And if there's one man who still hates Chavo, his name is Tejano. And he's just, and it's just him at his ranch, thinking about his, thinking about his past, winning matches, cashing checks, doing ranch shit, reminding us all he was the youngest and longest, longest reigning AAA mega champion. And he is a proud Mexican ass kicker. He was from a lucha family, but had to fight to get what he got. And then he pops off his top. He chops some wood. And then he says, fuck it. And he tears a wood in half barehanded. God damn it. Just some badass Tejano shit. The segment. And also Chavo, you, you fuck. You pissed me off. And I don't fight fair. They cut to this segment in a bar where Tejano gets jumped by two luchadors. But Tejano is tight with the par- bartender. He tips well, so she hands him the bull rope and just fucks these guys, man. (laughs) Their biggest mistake was pissing me off and not pissing on me. Absolutely. Tejano, yep. 
Alberto is back in the WWE at this time. Okay. So every, we like almost everyone in almost everyone in un, Lucha Underground, especially Tejano, who returns next week. Mm -hmm. We cut to the temple bathroom where Puma is pensively looking into the mirror. He kisses his pendant before Katrina asks him, who do you pray to? God? I heard Conan praying as the life drained from him in that casket. His last words? Forgive me. I wonder if he asks forgiveness for his wicked life or for failing you so miserably. It's too bad. He'd love to see what you do to Pentagon Jr. next week. Maybe it'll be you who to make the sacrifice to your master. God rest his soul. And that's it. During this, when she said, who do you pray to? God? I thought she was going to start saying, is that it? God? Well, I tell you, let me give you a little inside information about God. God likes to watch. He's a prankster. Think about it. He gives man instincts. He gives you this extraordinary gift. And then what does he do? He gives, I swear, for his own amusement, his own private cosmic gag reel. He sets the rules in opposition. It's a goof of all time. Look, but don't Ooh. touch. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, but don't swallow. And while you're jumping through one foot to the next, what is he doing? He's laughing his sick fucking ass off. He's a tight ass. He's a sadist. Worship that never. Goof. <laughs> I thought I know, she was just. I don't gonna, know what happened here. Oh, you don't know Devil's no Advocate? You are, absolutely not. You don't know the El Pacino <laughs> monologue from <laughs> Devil's Advocate that so many horrorcore artists have sampled into their music? I think my friend's mom was watching that movie on cable uh, after uh, when I was saying goodbye to her after the sleepover we just had. So, no, I don't particularly know Devil's Advocate super well. But imagine Katrina doing that. It would be very... Honestly, I don't think she needs to. The reason I wrote... I ended up writing this down word for word is a per... It's a perfect fucking moment. Like, there, like mm -hmm. she... Like, it's, it's, it's not a long monologue, but she says so much in it. And it's like... And she sets up the match next week. And she sets these fucking... These, Deep, deep motivations for these characters. Like, especially with Puma, who doesn't speak, right? It can be kind of hard, speaking as an amateur improviser, of which I am, it can be kind of hard to do a scene if your scene partner doesn't speak, right? Mm. It's, it's just fucking perfect. Is this, is this monologue better than the monologue from Devil's Advocate? I don't know, but it's really fucking good. And it's like, man, it's weird to because Dario was so good in the first season. Katrina's fucking killing it, though. Absolutely killing it. Katrina's the Al Pacino of Lucha Underground. And I'm not afraid to say that. We have one match left. It is the last Luchador standing match. Phoenix versus King Cuerno. And it's pretty cool. Commentary muse over the recent grizzling of young Phoenix, where he was he was this fresh faced, super happy to be here. Now he's seen some shit. He's been murdered already. Like he has been he was murdered by Mil Moretes and has come back once. Um, he is prepared to do it again. Vamp tells Matt and it's a moment I love. Vampiro has to tell Matt that this is a non title match. Which this is. This is this is a last man standing. It is not for the gift of the gods title. And as Vampiro has it, as Vampiro tells Matt that Matt, we see they cut to Matt and he's like putting it together in his head. And is and you see that the, the realization uh across his face. This is not a fair contest. Right? This is not this this match, the only reason this match exists is Katrina is using her power to keep Phoenix away from Mill. Like the fix is already in. The fact that this is not that why this is a non-title match is just to hurt Phoenix. And oh, Matt just being like, I'm starting to think professional wrestling is a little corrupt. It's beautiful. Fucking art. Bell rings and the fighters square off. This is not like last couple matches we had guys like running out trying to get that early advantage. No, nah, these you just square up and say, fuck it. And we love to see it. And we love to see it.
Anything, James, before I like we I, I get deep into this match? Yeah, hell yeah. James gave me the thumbs up. So yeah, let's well, I, I, we're, we're running a little tight on time. Watch the match. It's great. It's uh, it's 11 minutes, 20. It's, and real quick on the time, the times on all the matches. Uh, last week, I've, matches were very short. I think most of them were around five minutes. This week, the first match, very short. Second match for TV, seven minutes, 20 seconds. Good, good chunk of time. This one, 11 minutes, 20 seconds. And I like that. Sean. Uh, yes. I wasn't talking for like five minutes because you had said in improv, it's hard to do a scene with someone who doesn't talk. Well, on podcast, Sean, I don't think mm-hmm. you need a co-host. Thanks, James. I talk a lot. You did it. <laughs> You're fluid. You are perfect. Is it? Is this, are you quitting the show? Wait, please don't. <laughs> Goodbye. I, no, James is James is turning into a series of sparks emanating from his LED chest plate and is going into the sky. I'll see him in a thousand years. <laughs> Sean, I'm back from a thousand years in the past or future. I'm not sure which one because it's so much different. Oh, wow. Do they still have internet porn? Oh, you better believe they don't because the internet is outlawed and porn is just on the street corners, guys. People fuck on every single corner and, oh, the market (laughs) is oversaturated. Where's Uh, the fetish porn? Where? You know what else is oversaturated? My fucking pants after with pre-cum after watching this match. Yeah. Sorry, James. I know you just came back from the future, but we do have a podcast to uh-huh. finish. Uh-huh. It's a last um, luchador standing match. Vamp, have you ever been in any of those? To which Vamp says, huh, only with my ex-wife. Zing- zinger? I, I, she went for the knees. <laughs> That's, much like Vampiro's ex-wife, uh, this match fucking kicks ass. I don't know. I didn't have one. I thought I did. Phoenix's high high octane offense eventually gives him the early advantage. We got springboard ranas. We got these. We got precisely placed big boots from Cuerno. We get Phoenix jumping over the top, tope style, to land on nothing as Cuerno just walks away, and Phoenix eats fucking shit. At this point, I wrote down how crazy it is that more wrestlers aren't terribly injured during matches it's crazy Mm -hmm. how professional these fuckers are truly especially these two are so they're so fucking clean in the ring just to throw a highlight on two men who aren't still you know you can still watch them ray phoenix on aew king cuerdo as santos escobar in wwe they're so fucking smooth and clean when they do these crazy fucking dangerous spots, we get we get an arrow from the depths of hell like a mile away, which is the flying suicida that King Cuerno does. It's he's so Phoenix is so far away and he still lands it and it looks disgusting. Uh, we get like back to back tornillos, like one from the top rope. And then Cuerno's like, oh, he gets up at seven. And then Phoenix is like, fuck you and does another one. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. The finish of the match is there on the outside. Cuerno finds a ladder running battering ram. And <gasps> this the, looked so mean. This mm-hmm. is a very nasty battering ram. Takes Phoenix, it caves in Phoenix's skull. <gasps> he, leans the la- he leans the ladder on the office. He sets up a table. Cuerno is trying to German suplex Phoenix through the table, which Phoenix blocks. Eventually, he, he, try, he, go, he starts running up the ladder. Cuerno catches him by the foot halfway up. Phoenix kicks him off and the ladder down. Cuerno and the ladder smash through the table. That's the 10 count. Phoenix celebrates on top of the office. He has a, I believe is a title match for the Gift of the Gods title next week. Ooh, wait. And Oh, yeah. for, okay, with, Qu- I thought you meant a title match with Mill. I was like, wait, how? No, no, yeah, a, a, a Gift of the Gods title match mm-hmm. to win, win back his Gift of the Gods title. Which And it's one of those things where it's like, is it a little convoluted? Yeah. Is of that, course. Is that, is that a pretty fun path to walk down? I think so. Yeah. I love a room with twists and turns. One of the things I really loved about this match was Cuerno. He had it over on Phoenix from the get-go. And once the counts start getting more towards eight, Cuerno, along with the entire audience is counting with the ref, which I loved Mm -hmm. Cuerno just like an angry kid saying one, two, 
just saying like speed it up dude yeah. i clearly won but no 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 cuerno very i'm trying to think what's the word petulant mm -hmm. with the way he's like demanding these counts to pick up and you can you can see it you see cuerno just like uh it's so it's so it's so satisfying to see a well-to-do asshole get frustrated mm -hmm. like when you see when you see the when you see the the ceo's son who's trying to shut down the ski lodge get pissed off at losing the race it's oh, yeah. so satisfying that's that's the vibes i get when cuerdo is counting along with the referee and phoenix is the pu dudes pulling yank at ski school and as you know what somebody needs to because as much as they pull yank they also have a lot of heart and we love to see it yeah post show this shit is fucking crazy um, I did not know this, yup. Anyway, a white room with a key card lock. A professionally dressed woman enters. She sits at her desk. She is Captain Vasque Vasquez. And she's meeting with her detective. And holy fucking shit is Cortez Castro of the crew. Insane. Cortez Castro was an undercover cop. This the crew who they just got their asses kicked. I feel like I talked so much unearned shit about them last season. Now that I know that Cortez was a fucking undercover cop who doesn't who didn't take acting lessons, but that's okay. It's, it's yeah. fine. It, this yeah, this it the rough. acting on this part was a little <laughs> rough, but hey, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, Vas Vasquez is carrying it, and the story, the twist is so good, I don't even give a shit. I think it's just Vasquez. Vasquez? Thank you. Uh, Vasquez is great. She's 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 working, and that's fine. Katrina's given, uh, so she's like, what, if, what do you got for me? Uh, and Officer Cortez Castro is like, Katrina's given the crew an open invitation to compete. Captain's like, the crew? Cortez starts name-dropping Chavo and Blue Demon, and she's like, shut the fuck up. I'm tired of your stories. Stop telling me about Mr. Cisco. It's a bad name for a wrestler, and it's a bad name for a friend. You're in too deep, but I can't pull you out because we're so close to getting Dario. Who, like, and I love it, he even, it's not my fault we lost Dario. I wanted to bring him in when he made, when he made his brother murder Bale. Uh-huh. <laughs> so confirmed, Bale's face was eaten off by Dario's brother. And fucking Castro just watched. And he couldn't do anything about it. And now we know why he couldn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. He was undercover. And he had to, like, do it. It's fucking nuts. This is such a fucking nutty ass wrinkle. Yeah. And I'm 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 on board with this is one I am so on board with this nutty ass wrinkle until and I'm still on board. They didn't know this then. But she introduces him to his new partner who will also go undercover at the temple. You two don't even know each other. So just don't worry about it. His new partner, the absolutely canceled officer Joey Ryan. Joey Ryan was a a predominant figure in the Los Angeles indie scene, was credited a lot by a lot of indies guys as like helping put the scene on the map until the Me Too movement caught up with him and we found out he was just an absolute bastard. So we're going to be watching this absolute bastard for the next couple of weeks. This fucking segment is almost perfect. And we'll see where it goes. I think he's, unfortunately, I think he's here the whole time. Yeah, it looks like sucks. he is. Yeah. Which sucks, but you know, he's out of wrestling now. Nowadays he's being fired from Disneyland after people, after people, like after he got, he got ousted out of wrestling, he tried to get a job at Disney and then everyone was like, please don't hire this guy. He's not good. He's bad. So we can always take solace that Joey Ryan can't even get a job at Disney nowadays. But yeah, what a fucking wild ass twist. Mm -hmm. What a wild ass twist to these characters who were goons. They were they were they were the putties of Lucha Underground season one, right? Like they didn't what character development other than they wanted money and they didn't like fighting fair. And now it was like, oh, by the way, this one's been a cop the whole time. Yeah. And I we need to know about the other two more, I think, in order for like, were they cops? Were they just I people? Don't think so. I, yeah, we need more because the way she says, I don't want to hear about Mr. Cisco again makes me think that Mr. Cisco wasn't a cop and that Castro was getting too close. Like he was like, man, I know I'm not allowed to like you, but Mr. Cisco, I fucking hope you don't get eaten by a monster. Mm -hmm. 
I'm very stoked to see what the fuck is happening this season. Because, oh, in case you forgot, Aerostar is a ty- is a Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Aerostar is either a Doctor Who or a Captain Marvel, and we won't know until next episode, hopefully. I'll be here for there for that. James, will you be here for the next episode? Oh, you better believe I won't because you can do it oh, now shit. by yourself. <gasps> okay, well, then I guess it's just going to be me and one of two of our listeners. And if you come back next week, you get to hear all about our sweet, sweet plugs. For instance, you can see me at twitch.tv slash Goose Von Kaiser, where I'm, I'm playing Dark Souls 3. Am I playing it well? No, but I'm having fun, and I would love for you to come through. Yeah. Kisses. Oh, kiss me. <laughs> Under the dear, dear starlight, kiss me, and then fly into space. You've got LED lights on your chest, and you turn into sparks, and Castro is a cop, and it's still a cab, bitches. Kiss me. Yeah, turn into a Sparks. Who am I? A fairy in Spyro the Dragon, babe? Oh, I, I thought you were going to be... <laughs> the, the babe got me. I thought you were going to be a turn into a Sparks, and then you start writing all these really sad, beautiful love stories that get made into these million-dollar motion pictures starring Ryan Gosling. Nicholas. Ooh, uh, the babe got me. That's what I saw after seeing Pig in the City. Hey... That'll do, James. That'll Ooh, do. What you got to plug? What you got to plug? Let's do it at the same exact time. It'll make editing go quicker. I just did my <laughs> plugs. Wait, I just what, did, did my plugs. Oh, Were you I was, listening? I was reading about <laughs> Joey Ryan <laughs> allegations. Yeah, he's not a good guy. <laughs> Hey guys, head over to MLMPod.com to find out information about the other podcast I do. Listen to my music under Marshland Monster. New jungle drum and bass thing coming out in November on the 10th. So that's just a couple weeks away, baby. And head over to Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod where for $5 a month you get exclusive content every single Friday. I might have accidentally said Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod.com in my previous thing, but that's just MLMPod.com to find out about free feed stuff, but Patreon.com forward slash MLMPod to find it. For $5 a month you get exclusive content every single Friday. Again, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. You got this, baby. You got a lot of great stuff. It's like three and a half years of content every single week putting stuff out. Sean's been there. Everyone's been there. Oh, yeah. And $10 patrons get monthly bonus content like straight to Patreon where you could hear Sean talk with Torchy Barry and I about Invisible Dad. Dean Norris. Absolute classic. Yeah, it's so yeah. good. And you got yeah. shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those starting with Steve F. Who yeah. Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour. Who yeah. Alex Z, the Waz. Who yeah. Orion. Who yeah. Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. Who Chaos yeah. Joshua Jakis. Who yeah. Steve Barnes, a sweet child of time and intro void. Listen to his music. Sweet ooh yeah. My mother. Mommy ooh yeah. Lil Corey's BFF and now former roommate Shane. Who yeah. That fed. That who yeah. Twitch.tv forward slash core winning. It's Corwin. Who? Twitch slash TV? Yeah. And of the Rom Complex and Formulaic, a podcast and script writing, it's twitch.tv forward slash R2 Shelby 2. Who? Yeah. And I've been James. I'm still Sean. And this has been Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, yeah.